another episode of the Extraordinary Sports Show. I'm on with a special guest, actor and comedian Chris Titone, a hyster. Yeah, baby, the man is successful all the way across the board. You've seen him in over, <laughs> well over a dozen Sandler movies. California Cation. He was just on Kevin Can Wait. How we doing, Chris, this evening in Southern California? We're doing great, man. The weather's beautiful. Uh, you know, NFL's about to start back up. I'm talking to, I'm talking to uh, one of my closest friends, Alex. Uh, and it's a beautiful, 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 beautiful Thursday. It feels like Saturday. <laughs> well, I, I, would, I have to bring it up because you, you had a sports theme birthday party just a, a couple weeks ago, and that's pretty freaking awesome. I think that's every grown man's dream, low key. It really was. It really was. Uh, the tables were named after different, uh, you know, sports heroes of mine. And, of course, we ended the night with a sports trivia quiz, which, of course, I won. <laughs> I wish you were there, man. Where were you? Dude, I, you told me you were going to put me at the car ride table, and I wasn't sure if you're talking in re relation to Bill or the Seinfeld table that they never called in the episode at the Chinese dinner. <laughs> All right, <Paul. laughs> yeah, I love it. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I would have came. I would have came in a heartbeat. I would have hate. I would have hated to steal your thunder and taking a sports trivia W. So it's no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But so where are you located, by the way? I'm in Los Angeles, man. Born and raised in San Diego, but I live on the Hollywood Sign Street, Beachwood. If you're uh, familiar. Beachwood Canyon, love it. Yeah, man, just working my way in sports and comedy, baby, one way or another. Yeah. Dude, so the so the party was fantastic. Named out. Give me some of your favorite other athletes and teams and such that were at the birthday. The thing, I, you know, I like the up and comers, so I, I had a lot of cool great players. There's there's a great team in Texas Liberty that you know uh, they're they're probably going to take state this year. I had a lot of players from there. Uh, of course, Demarcus De La Sean. Right. Um, you know, I, I had some old school. I had, I had, I had of course, the Dan Burrito table. You know, old school. My my Italian brother from another mother. Without question. Did Did you have Finkel or Einhorn present? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I should have made that one table. All right. <laughs> Still one of the best movies. I guess you could call that a sports movie without – That's to me, that's that's one of my favorites. I mean, I wouldn't even call that a movie. That's art, man. That's, <laughs> that's, I mean, when Jim Carrey did that, it really changed the game, and it told everyone, hey, overacting is funny. I would agree. And, hey, I, I when I try to tweet and lock down pro athletes, among others, for interviews, I – get my Jim Carrey on in this, the montage scene where he's tracking down dolphins and tackling them and bothering them while they're taking a piss and so on and so forth. Oh, uh, that's such a great scene when he, and then he goes to the mirror and he counts the diamonds in his forehead. Oh, freaking fantastic. So you're, you're from Florida, Fort Lauderdale originally. I know you, you said the dolphins are one of your best te favorite teams and it's got to be an interesting lifetime as a Finns fan, man. Take me through it. I mean, yeah, you know, we've had our ups and we've had our downs, uh, you know, more downs than up, as I'm sure you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, next year's looking pretty good, though. Um, I, I feel like, I feel like we, I feel like everything we put into this sport, we, we're owed a win. I feel like next year could be our year, um, and if not, definitely in the next three I like that. I'm I'm an optimist as well. I actually am I no longer have a team. I, I was dumped by my hometown San Diego Chargers. So I, I think, you know, this is going to be an interesting year for me. I, I I'm not opposed to rooting for the Finns. I'm certainly not rooting for the Pats in the AFC East. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I agree. Did uh, where are you on Tannehill? Because he's such a a. There's so many people back and forth on the guy. He's productive. He's a solid starter. In your humble opinion, do you think this guy can win you the big one? Okay, here's the thing, all right? He could be a winner. Time's going to tell. He has it in him, okay? It's all about can he bring what's inside of him to the surface. I like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm without getting too deep, 
I, I'm a daily meditator. I'm big on visualization. And so I don't know if that's what you were getting to, but he's obviously got the intangibles, the physical components. So you think maybe it's a belief thing, if you will? Here's the thing. I mean, before you do something, they say you see yourself do it in your mind three, maybe four times. So if he sees himself winning three, maybe four times, I think he can pull it off. He, he's, you know... He just gotta visualize. That's all that comes out. So you're right. You're right there with me on visualization, baby. Definitely. That's fantastic. What? Why do you think not all athletes tap into that? Because you're looking at the greats, the Jordans, the Kobe's, Phil Jackson, teaching, practicing in the dark, things of that nature. Why? Even though we're watching a physical sport, we all know mental is just as prevalent, if not more, in sports. Yet, I don't know that every athlete reaches their potential. Why? Why do you think that is? Well, here's the thing. I mean, you know, I, I say every single pro athlete has that raw talent, okay? Right. Then you've got half of them will practice as hard as a Michael Jordan, okay? Mm -hmm. Then, after that, you've got half of them that have that something special in them. Then, after that, <laughs> you've got half of them can actually visualize. So, I mean, really, you're talking about 10% of people that are going to be the greatest. Do you think half of what you just said outside of the physical born, born with the physical capabilities is within you? You're born with that. You have that Kobe, that Jordan hunger, or you don't, that can't be taught. No, I, 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 you know, I don't believe in luck. I don't believe you're born with anything. I think that all those greats are the first ones to show up to practice are the last ones to leave. That's why they're great. There is no other reason. Wow. Well, it wasn't a Woody Allen who said 80% of it's just showing up. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, when, when you think about, when you think about those guys that you, how often do we hear a story of, of a first round draft pick that was supposed to be huge and then wasn't huge. And it's always because, you know, there's, there's paparazzi photos of him at a bar or a club. I know. I know. You know, I had an interesting conversation this morning with a writer, journalist for the New York Post, Mike Vaccaro. We were talking about the NBA rest situation going on right now. I'm sure you've tuned into that where the, 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 the league's not happy. LeBron, Kyrie, and Caleb are sitting out at the 11th hour for a nationally televised game. Do you think this is this is something that's Kind of going along the lines of what we're talking about because, you know, it's ticking off guys like Reggie Miller and that generation, the one before, where they're beside themselves because they played 82 of 82, and now you got guys resting. Is any of that kind of what you're just alluding to in regards to, well, you're 19 years old, you're getting on millions of dollars, the, the incentive to be that greatness within you or, or reach that is, is not at, I don't want to say obsolete, but it's just not as, as much as it used to be. And maybe the previous generation of sports or at least basketball. Yeah. I mean, just generationally, I mean, you could say this about sports. You could say this about any industry. Mm -hmm. There was just more respect back in the day, more respect of, of being a part of the industry. And now it's less about playing the game and making the shots and more about getting my shoe deal, getting my drink deal, oh. you know, getting on TV, uh, you know, one man show. And, and, you know, back in the day, a team won. And now I feel like a player wins. That's well said. Did you catch the uh, McDonald's All American game last night? Of course. It, did that not look like the NBA All Star game to some degree? I mean, where. Where's the defense? Where's the pro? I mean, I was born in 90. I'm a little young, but I was five, six, seven, remembering Alonzo Mourning's Heat versus Patrick Ewing's Knicks. And it was 88, 84, and three people are leaving with bloody noses. Now the Lakers are giving up 140 on a Wednesday. Yeah. I mean, you know, some guys look good. Some guys look not so good. But, you know, I guarantee you, a lot of guys got calls today, you know, looking for, for uh, sponsorship. But it's. I love what you said about a team one. It's just. It's. It's. It's refreshing to hear that because you know that's. I. I. I it is. It's an individual based kind of phenomena we're going through right now. And I. I do you think there's going to be something that fixes it? Is there going to be a transparent player that brings it back to the old school style? Is or is it? Is it something that this is just what 2017 is? 
One thing's for sure, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Oh. Man. Well, I think... I just hope, I don't know, if you were sitting down with a commissioner in the NBA right now, what would, how, how would you explain, what would you say to him about this, these stars taking, taking games off or needing rest? Because I, I do see both sides, but, you know, it's tough to argue when you're making 250 grand a game. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, okay? The heart, the heart of, I mean, you're talking specifically about the NBA right now. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, because because it's kind of what we're jamming on. But the NBA left when Michael Jordan stepped up to the plate in a baseball game. Wow! That was the last time I, I had I had respect of the soul of NBA. When that man left, he he took my heart with him. Wow! And for them to get that back. I don't know. I don't, I mean, but I what was it like? I mean, what was it like when he came back the second time and rocked four or five? It just wasn't the same for you. It didn't. It did, even though he won three more. You know, I mean, a comeback is a comeback, but you know, the original is the original. Yeah. Yeah, that's well said. Now, I do. I don't know that. You know, I. You could argue, or could I make the argument that the NBA is very much a player's league, and the player has a ridiculous more, more a ridiculous amount more of hand than in the NFL, where it's the almighty shield. And unless you're a superstar quarterback, no one guy is bigger than the team. W- would you say that that's accurate? Yeah, I mean, in the NFL, that's more of a team win. No one man really win a game. It, it, to, to, win a, to win an NFL game, there's got to be way more coagulation than any other sport. Mm. Well said. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> but I... Very and yeah, very intelligent mind. Bring able to bring some life into life perspective into sports. What has sports taught you, life lessons wise, that you you really have have taken and, and run with over the years? I mean, there's no I in team. I like it. Uh, together, everyone achieves more. <sighs> so, could you could I say that being on a on a a team for a movie? is much more similar to being on a successful football team than it is on, you know, five guys in an NBA team where, you know, Harden's putting up 40 and carrying the squad. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I've been on, because movies are, are, TV shows are, you know, I've been on projects where it's a team effort and I've been on projects where it's a team effort but you have a strong leader. Um, I've been on projects where it's a team effort and no one's leading. Uh, I've been on projects where it's not a team effort at all. Everyone's trying to lead and it gets confusing. You know, that's usually web series, but yeah. Uh, you know, there's. I, I think. It, I think. I think films and television is a lot like sports in a way that the coach is the director and the star is the quarterback. I love it. That's phenomenal. And the co-star, you know, wow, that's it's fantastic. I'm glad I asked that question. You have a favorite sports movie in your in your lifetime? Or is uh, it hard to choose this I one? Mean, yeah, I mean, of course, there's, um, you know, Ace Ventura. There's Pizza Pizza. Yeah. There's uh, Airplane was really good. Uh, have you ever seen a movie called Major League? Oh, like, my gosh. Of of course, the little uh, the well, you got you got Charlie Sheen coming out of the bullpen. I was trying to remember the guy who does the the good juju at his at his uh, at his locker before the game. Uh, yeah, that is Ricky Vaughn. Is Charlie Sheen right? 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 Ricky Vaughn, uh, of course. Uh, the guy that does the uh, I believe it uh, voodooism in the locker. It is. 
Yes, Serrano. What a call. Power, power right-handed hitter. Wow. Yeah, major he leagues all the time. Straight ball very well. But curveball, he not hit very well at all. Did, were you a fan of Rowan Gardner? Chicago Cubs. Let the big dog eat. Do you mean Robin Bagger? <laughs> Hey, I grew up yeah. with the last name Weinberger, Jewish father, Italian Catholic mother with Buddhist beliefs. I'm a bit of a walking contradiction. So I could somewhat relate with Weinberger and Rowan Gardner. I, I felt somewhat oh, of a connection. Great, yeah, and then that's my that's my opening line, Chris, in stand-up is I moved to Hollywood in the town in industry run with a lot of Jews, changed my last name to Monaco, talk about playing your cards wrong, which is my mother's last name, not a random name, but. Literally, okay. private Catholic school with Weinberger and then moved to Hollywood, changed my name to Monaco. Idiot. Hey, I, I think be proud, be proud of the Judaism. I like Weinberger, baby. I see you go back. I did get bar mitzvah. No, I'm very proud. The thing is, is I'm like I'm like Larry David Jr. I, I the, the neurotic, you can't, I mean, I do talk with my hands. I am anime, but yes, there's no way, uh, there's no way that Judaism will ever leave me. Very proud of it. That's, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. I got a great recipe for pasta in a bag. <laughs> without question, without question. Oh, what, thoughts on the NCAA tournament? How's your bracket looking? Uh, bracket's looking pretty good this year. Um, of course, I'm doing it with my friend Dan Bernstein. He's, he, he leads it. Uh, awesome. I am not in first place. I am in third place behind Dan and Tark. Wow, you're in third. So how many of the final fours did you get? Uh, no. Jeez, that's wild. And you're still in third. Yeah, it's a, it's been a, a, I don't want to say, it's just, I don't know, it's a weird tournament. It's a weird tournament. Yeah, it's been surprising. There's, there's been a lot of surprises for me, at least. Um, you know, if you, if, if, if you watch sports, uh, sports news channel, um, it, to them, it's, not, it's never a surprise. Oh, we knew this was going to happen. <laughs> sure you did. I wish, I wish you would have freaking told me that but uh you know there were a lot of surprises on my end yeah i mean i i marinated on throwing gonzaga in the four i had unc that's it i, I did have oregon in the elite eight I, I did watch a little of them i thought definitely uh dorsey is a big time playmaker but beside the point it'd be cool to have north carolina versus south carolina i'll tell you that much that'd be pretty cool yeah i mean both the carolinas are pretty good teams to see them battle would be, you know, a Carolina frenzy. Back to your point of why of of you enjoying team the team mindset. Is that something in college basketball that it maybe will never leave the idea of a team winning? Be, not only because only one or two guys can be a knockdown shooter, but ultimately it is it's it's a team effort out there, especially watching the tournament. Yeah, I mean that's why you know uh, uh, pro sports are great, but I really actually get more enjoyment out of college, high school, middle school, you know, even a little league game because no one really sticks out. That's, that's, when you're a kid, that's when the team matters more than yourself. And the older you get, the, the more you start thinking about, I have to go home to my apartment and I wish it was a house. I have to go home to my house now and I wish it was a mansion. I have to go home to my mansion now and I wish it was a bigger mansion. That's a, that's a great takeaway. Do you, do you, that's, I mean, I'm big on gratitude too. That makes me feel like more people need to visit a third world country and realize food, water, shelter, and you're good to go, baby. Yeah. Maybe the, yeah. Dan, maybe the Dan Patrick, maybe the Dan Patrick show too. But other than that, you know, we're rocking. Yeah, I like Dan Patrick. He was in, um, he's been in a lot of, uh, a lot of movies I've been in. He's a good dude. He's a fun man. He's a fun guy to hang out with. Yeah, he is. And I, I just, I love his interviews too. He's he's just so natural. He's smooth cat, smooth criminal. That's something and not being in the six foot club I look up to. Because guys in the six foot club, you know, especially six four and up, you're just smooth whether you want to be or not. Unless you're like a Kramer hipster doofus, you know, to quote Seinfeld. But you know, I I'm in the six foot club counting the fro, but you know what I mean. Tall, smooth criminal. Plus you got two first names, Dan and Patrick. Ah, that's a good point. That's a good point. So being an Italian athlete, how was it for sports playing uh, growing up? Because I'm a huge fan of Italian athletes. I, I think that's where I tap into my athleticism. I mean, 
it's only a handful of heaps in the NFL and NBA over the years. But Italians, we're out there, baby. Um, yeah, I think being Italian, a lot is expected of you. Um, and, uh, you know, not only with sports, but with being able to know where the best pizza is <laughs> and also, you know, knowing how to speak uh, a little bit of Italian and also, you know, buying uh, 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 your first, um, you know, Corvette, stuff like that. <laughs> What's your favorite sport? I know you, you like watching youth, which is very commendable because honestly, a lot of people are, are just want to watch the stars and, and can't even answer why necessarily. It's just because they're the biggest brand of sports. But there is there is an element of of authentic authenticness in in the younger sports. Is there a favorite, not just sport, but also division that you gravitate towards, and and that's that's your cup of tea. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Any any division, you know, double A, triple A, that doesn't have a, some guy rooting it for everyone where he's going to, you know, hit the ball so hard that, you know, everyone's going to cheer or throw the ball so far that, you know, the, the guy can't even run and catch. You, you really have to – anything that's a team effort where – you know what? You know what? How about this? Here's the best way I can explain it. You know, at the end of the game where everyone passes, the two teams pass by each other and they slap five. Right. As soon as that ends, I'm not interested. I love it. Because they go back to what? Being individuals? Yeah. I mean, as soon as you stop walking up to your adversary and saying, I respect you because you went through the same training. Uh, you went through the, 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 the you had to jump through the same hurdles. As soon as that stops, all of a sudden you're an individual instead of a, instead of a team. Mm. That's that's very true. It really is. I, I want to ask you a question. I I think in 2017, got a couple younger brothers, and you know, I'm just watching their friends and everything, even the, my buddy, my brother in high school, I, it seems as if a lot of people now, they're just seeing athletes on game day. They're just seeing actors. Uh, my brother. Yeah. Uh, ben and Matt. Yeah. Er, Weinberger. I, I would love to be related to the drummer, drum, drummer of Springsteen. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And, and we had to use smaller fonts on our baseball jerseys in Little League. But other than that, um, yeah. So, but what I was getting to was, I, I think, you know, and you're a successful actor, comedian, and so I wanted to get your, your takeaway because for some reason I feel like there's a lot of people, they only see athletes on game day, on Sunday or, or primetime television. They only see actors, you know, at, at the Academy Awards, the Emmys, et cetera, at parties. It, it takes work. It's a process. Life is a process. Do you feel, I mean, just in, in, in a tip or two to a younger cat and even the younger generation, have we lost the love for the process, not just in sports, but also in, in several different crafts? Well, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a really good question, man. The process is what it is. You know what I mean? You can, you can take someone through the motion. It's, are they going to take it to them? You know what I mean? It's all muscle memory. That's really all sports are, is doing the same thing over and over again, no matter who's running at you, no matter what just happened, uh, no matter how much your foot hurts. And, uh, you know, I think the more you teach it to someone, the more they're going to know it. But some people don't really take to it, and some people really, really do. And, and you, again, I know you said you don't think anyone's born necessarily with internally some you know things of greatness if you will is that do you i just i hope it doesn't become a lost art the idea of just day in day out love for the craft i, I think anyone who's who, who's blessed enough and um talented enough to call themselves a professional sports athlete Anyone who can call, yes, I am actually paid money to to play a sport. That right there, I think that's the even playing ground. That right there means you were born with the talent. 
and then it's up to you to turn it into more or nothing. <sighs> Have you ever given a pump-up speech to a team? Sorry, what's that? I said, have you ever given a pump-up speech or a motivational speech to a, to a sports team? Uh, no, I've, I've never given a motivational sports, sports team speech. Funny enough. I, I feel like you, you got a little Pacino any given Sunday in you, man. I know, I know you're not screaming and shouting this, this, this Seinfeld gold, but this is, this is some serious substance. I'm not kidding. Oh, thanks, man. No, I, my youngest brother better listen to this. He has to. Oh, good, good. Ben, uh, I want you to take your talent <laughs> and, you know, I want you to not only run with them, but also use your feet to run. Well, it's, I, I <laughs> Well, he's, he committed to bat. He read the Malcolm Gladwell book, the, the 10,000 hour rule at like nine or 10 guys started putting in thousands of hours committed to, to basketball, unfortunately towards ACL sophomore year. So he's had a little adversity, but I, I, we try to tell him it's, it, and that's why I love the, the mental component of what you were alluding to earlier, because, you know, it's tough to tell a six foot, six foot white guy, you know, in a world of very athletic people that he plays, you, he plays basketball. Yeah, he plays basketball. And he's white? <laughs> he's, he's a tribesman, baby. Is his name Larry Bird? <laughs> if not, he should probably quit. <laughs> Dude, the Johnny Stockton, it's got to come back, man. I just, it, I don't know. There's different, it's, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer you can bring value, not just to, into your craft, into a, to a movie. In a number of different ways, you can bring value in a number of different ways to athletics and a team. And, you know, I saw a couple interviews with you before this to prep and, and you talked about being humble, man. And I think that's a big, that's a big thing in, in being able to contribute to a team and, and not being bigger than the team. And, you know, back to having, yeah, I mean, here, here's the thing. There's always, there's, okay. So every year, Basketball, football, hockey, whenever, when, whoever wins the championship, there's always that star. There's always the Dan Marino. There's always the, the, the John Stockton. But as soon as they win, that person always runs over to the guy saving his ass, the guy making sure that he doesn't get tackled, the guy that catches the ball. The, you know what I mean? The, what I'm trying to say is to every Michael Jordan, there's a Scotty Pippen. Hmm. No, I follow. And so you're saying from, so he touched on it a little, uh, expand on it a little more. I mean, no one, I get, no one can do it themselves. You're saying they're always, they're always going to their right hand man, if you will, to lean on. Well, here's what I'm saying, okay. Is that every star has a right hand man, every right hand man has a right hand man, has a right hand man, has a right hand mm, man. And I gotcha. That, my friend, is what you call a T E A M. <sighs> Who is your favorite team right now in all of sports that exemplifies what you just touched on? Miami Dolphins until I die. <laughs> hey, I won both fantasy football championships with Jarvis Landry times two, so I can't say I disagree. <laughs> Dude, I the Dolphins are such. They're, they're. I feel like we can kind of talk, somewhat uh, relate to, uh, me being a Charger fan, you being a Dolphin. I mean, you you win game. I don't want to say. You know, I know you probably think every game's a W, but you you guys really win games. No one maybe would thought would have thought you won, and then you lose games, to like Buffalo at home or something. It's just like. Ah. That's a W they needed to have, and then you end up nine and seven, and it's for frustrating season, and you got to do it all over again. Yeah. Hey, hey. The, the only thing I think Buffalo is good for is the wing. Right? <laughs> oh, you know, and and miss field goals in the the Super Bowl. No, I'm just kidding. That's, that's cold. But hey, it's up. It, I will say, you now have, in my humble opinion, the best stadium to host the Super Bowl outdoors. Moving oh, forward. For sure. Agree. I mean, definitely agree. You know, that Miami weather is perfect, 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 perfect for Super Bowl. Um, and, you know, hopefully it, it's there. I, 
I don't see why I did the AFC is I I don't say it's up for grabs, but it's anybody's conference next year. I mean, anyone could really anyone could win on any given day. You know, there's a winner, there's a loser. It doesn't matter if you go into it thinking you're you know with, with all this fast saying you're going to win or all the fast saying you're going to lose. It matters. All that matters is what you visualize. Do you see yourself winning? Do you see yourself? That's what I'm. I, that that's what I wish I could tell athletes. It's the same thing in life. Are you are you sleepwalking into an action, or are you or are you putting an intention behind it, getting yourself aligned in a good feeling space, and then moving forward? I, I wish more people would do that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's almost like every coach should create like a, a cartoon animated thing where it shows all of them leaving the stadium winners. And they should all watch that right before they walk on the field. Just visualize it. I, I hope that happens, actually. That would be sensational. Talk about an educated cartoon for athletes of all ages. Totally. I want to I wanna watch a, a, you know, a, a, an animated cartoon of me going to the gym before I go to the gym. <laughs> what is it in that with, with that that inner critic that that everybody has to some degree that whether it's you know you're not feeling you have the talent or the 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 it's a worthiness thing or the other person the other team the other the other athlete they're bigger they're stronger how do you how do you win with the inner critic in a day in day out basis whether it's sports or it's life well you know, uh, I think everyone is their worst critic, is their own worst critic, and um, you know, uh, uh, I think there's such a difference between having an inner critic and having an inner criticizer. Ooh, there's there's such a difference between something between something inside of you saying you're not good and something inside of you saying you could be better. The latter is just so much more appetizing. Yes, the latter just. I mean, really, it's the same thing, but it's just the way you word it. <sighs> it, it. That is, you need to make it, make, lock that quote down as a Chris Ty Tom Palm, a quote, baby. That needs to be on a coffee mug or a t-shirt or both. No, seriously, inner critic or inner criticizer. I've literally, I've done, I'd like to think I've put a decent amount of energy in the spiritual practice and I, I that's I've been saying it for years. So are you are you are you um a law guy attracted everything exactly that you wanted that uh, friend seeing it in your mind first, third eye, whatever you want to call it, a gut instinct and, and then I don't know, but I know when I'm driving drunk Saturday night I attract a lot of law. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, well, I know you're busy. Uh, I got like two more minutes. Yeah, no, no. I was just going to say, I know you're busy guy. I'll get you out of here uh, with, with one question. If you, if you could share a heartfelt piece of advice to anyone pursuing what they love, what they feel they're here to do purpose-wise, what have you, what would it be? Not necessarily sports, but just anything. Cause, cause you're doing what you love, man, every day. And, and, it sounds like you, you really are someone that can provide a lot of value to anybody that comes across. I, I've certainly learned from you just the last 30 minutes. Well, Alex, I tell this to you every single, every single uh, person who asks me that specific question. And the answer is, there's absolutely no difference between 98% and 99%. It's nothing. Who cares? But the difference between 99% and 100% is everything. It's <sighs> literally everything. If you're putting in 99%, you might as well be putting in 98 or 97 or 96 or 50 or 4 or fucking nothing. If you're going to put in 100%, that means waking up, eating, sleeping, drinking, showering. The only thing I would say to that is when can I flirt with girls in that 100% in the day? When would it be appropriate? I mean, do you want to get late or do you want to be great? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm completely joking. This is really something 
uh, uh, someone told me as soon as I moved to LA, um, you'll never, oh, I'm sorry, wait, you'll, you'll lose a lot of money chasing women, but you'll never lose women chasing money. Ooh. Well, I was raised, do what you love, the money will come. I, I hate to have money be the motivator, but I know I, I follow completely, completely. Dude, I hope I hope to see you around the comedy circuit, man. You come, you come uh, hang out at the comedy store on the on the porch ever or Laugh Factory or anything. Yeah, of course, man. I look like the Crossroads Oh, phenomenal, man. Well, I look forward to saying what's up in in person, and, and thank you so much for the time, Chris. Honestly, it was a, it was a great conversation. Thank you, sir. Bless. All right, man. I'll uh, I'm gonna.